Hi there, Val here. If you are hearing this message, then I have had a baby. Yay! However, as yay as it is for me, it means that we are going to be going on another short break where we will have a couple weeks without new episodes. But we have a special episode for you today to enjoy instead. Please enjoy this episode of Have You Seen that was previously only accessible to our Patreon supporters. Thanks as always for being a listener, and we'll be back soon. Hey, Val. Hey, Al. Welcome to Have You Seen. <gasps> Thank you. Welcome to you and welcome to our Patreon patrons. Yay. This is our first ever Patreon episode. Oh, so exciting. And it's it's exciting for that reason, but it's exciting for another reason. Val, That's right. tell everyone why we're excited today. Because uh, today we're talking about Star Wars. Star Wars. And so everyone, if you haven't yet picked up on our one clue that we just gave you, I, Al, for the first time ever in my life, have watched a Star War. I can attest. I witnessed it. (laughs) Al? It it happened. (laughs) First impression. (laughs) Okay. Wait, first, first, real quick. Yeah. We watched specifically A New Hope, the Mm -hmm. first ever Star War. First ever Star War made. That felt like the appropriate starting point. Right. Because that's how everyone else was introduced to it. Exactly. Exactly. So I would say, should we do, should we do like a little intro of like what it's about? What's the. Yeah. So we watched uh, Star Wars, uh, which was actually retroactively titled A New Hope because they didn't originally intend for it to be a trilogy. So it was just called Star Wars. And then they had to go and rename it because then everything was Star Wars. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, It came out May 25th, 1977. It's too bad that it didn't come out on May the 4th, but they couldn't have known, I guess. Yep. But we'll be dropping a fun vid on our Instagram on May 4th. And our Tiki Talk. And our Tiki Talkie. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So just a real quick rundown here. Mm -hmm. This film was written and directed by George Lucas himself. Okay. Recognize the name. Yep. (laughs) Pretty, pretty famous name. Yep. Um, and the star, the cast was as follows. Mark Hamill played Luke Skywalker. Who is five foot nine. Who is five foot nine. We looked it up. Uh, Al had to know. I did. Mark Hamill has not been in a ton of other stuff. His career has kind of been defined by his character, Luke Skywalker. However, okay. he has been pretty successful as a voice actor. Oh, okay. And one of his most famous roles as a voice actor is he's played the Joker quite a few times. Cool. As a voice actor. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, and actually, we just watched an episode of What We Do in the Shadows that he was in, and it was Ooh. very funny. Nice. He's a funny man. Sending you strength, Mark. <laughs> uh, then we have Harrison Ford as Han Solo, mm-hmm. the rogue. It's nice to to see him here because I did recently watch um, Raiders of the Lost Ark for the first time. Wow. I think I watched it during lockdown, but it feels like it was like last week. Mm -hmm. And that was just a few years after this. He basically got that role because of this. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Did you know that he was like a carpenter, a set carpenter? No. Yeah. And George basically just like spot or no, it actually might have been Spielberg. One of them spotted him and was just like. He's interesting. And I think it was George because his first role was in American Graffiti, which was okay. also George. And thanks to George Lucas, wow. uh, Harrison Ford has had quite the career. Really pays to just be hot. <laughs> that's, yep. that's actually hot what and, I'm hearing. <laughs> hot and roguish, yeah. I guess. Um, yes. I mean, he was Indiana Jones, mm-hmm. is Indiana Jones. Actually, notoriously has said many times he does not want anyone to ever play Indiana Jones besides him whoa yes and it's very funny because like recently someone was like what if they rebooted it with chris pratt and he was like no no one can play indiana jones period wow like over my dead body kind of talk which is very funny which means they probably will wait to reboot it until he is no longer with us yeah well what i what i heard recently which i thought was an amazing idea of course they probably won't do this but Kihue Kwan, mm-hmm. who just won an Oscar, yeah. was in the third 
Indiana Jones movie as a kid. Yeah. And so a lot of people were like, well, why don't they just follow short round? Yeah. Who's that was his character's right. name. So it won't be like an Indiana Jones movie. It'll be like a, his storyline. Right. And they could even like explore other histories, like yeah. more Asian histories and stuff like that, because it's a different perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a really smart solution awesome. because then you're not replacing Indiana Jones, but you're right. still staying true to like the original stories. Yeah. And Kihue Kwan is great. And he, and he gets more work right. because he deserves it. Exactly. So I think that's what they should do. Great. Um, otherwise, I mean, he was in The Fugitive Witness, mm. uh, a million other things that I'm okay. blanking on. Uh, what's the one? Uh, Air Force One. Yeah, he's been in all kinds of stuff. And actually, Harrison Ford just got, recently got cast in the Marvel Cinematic Universe oh. to replace William Hurt, who died recently. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we have Carrie Fisher yep. as Princess Leia. There she is. I need everyone to know I'm wearing my little buns right now. That's right. Al's in her buns. I'm in my buns. And she's got her Spoiler City shirt and I got my, my top is off. <laughs> Actually, my top is on, and it's my Spoiler City shirt. That's right. I'm wearing my Star Wars shirt. <laughs> so Carrie, again, was kind of defined by her role as Princess Leia, but she had a pretty illustrious writing career. She's a oh. very, very funny writer and she was I forget the term but there there's like a person who like punches up scripts and oftentimes they're not like credited mm. as a writer it's like a secret okay and no one ever really knows that they ever had a hand in writing a wow. movie and Carrie Fisher that was her job for like decades wow she so, was a script a script puncher yeah basically so she cool. punched up tons of comedy scripts that like we all know and love wow. you can find lists online of like some of the ones that she worked on but okay yeah so that was kind of her like secret power cool which is pretty cool and she's just very funny in general and related to debbie reynolds who's been in a few decoms that's right it's her daughter yep very cool crossover very cool and they were adorable together yeah then we have Peter Cushing as Grand Moff Tarkin, uh, the commander of the mm. Death Star. The one who looks like Anton Ego? Yes, okay. that one. Yes. From Ratatouille, for those of you who needed an extra puzzle piece there. <laughs> yes. And uh, as I mentioned to Al, Tarkin is a character who we see a lot of in the expanded Star Wars universe. So okay. he was he left an, an impression, this, this man. Okay. Then we have Alec Guinness as Obi-Wan Kenobi or Ben oh, Kenobi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's there. Yep. And he, I don't actually know a ton of his career. I know he was in The Bridge on the River Kwai, which is one of my dad's favorite movies. I watched it once and fell asleep halfway through. I'm so sorry to all the cinema buffs. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, he was a very, you know, successful actor in his time. Okay. Yeah. Then we have Anthony Daniels as C-3PO, oh. uh, our favorite protocol droid. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I th think he's my favorite character. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's cool about him is that he has played C-3PO in every single Star Wars thing. Wow. I'm like, I'm not exaggerating. Like I, I just look, I'm looking at his IMDb right now. He's even the voice of C-3PO in Lego Star Wars. Wow. Yeah. What a career. I know. Really cool. How old is he? He is 77. It's 2022. It's 2023. 20, oh my God, it's 2023. Jesus. Wait, sorry, I'm so bad at math. Hold on. Yeah. So four plus three is seven. Mm -hmm. So 77. Okay. Right? Yeah, because in three years, in, 20, in, in 2026, 2026 he'll, he'll be, be 80. 80. Yes. Okay, I did that right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he's wow. a champ. Yes. Uh, then we had Kenny Baker as R2-D2 fun mm -hmm. someone just doing the little beeps yeah and he's like in he's in there r2d2 yes what yeah there's like pictures set pictures of oh him. oh my gosh yes, he is it's literally gotta be hot in there yeah i'm sure it was and they were filming in a like, desert in tunisia i think for wow. the tatooine scenes yeah so yeah i imagine he was pretty hot in there yeah this again kind of defined his career mm -hmm. uh, him being r2d2 and then Peter Mayhew played Chewbacca. <laughs> yep. And uh, he died in 2019, so pretty recently. Oh. Um, but again, he played Chewbacca pre 
I feel like I remember into, people posting about that on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. And and he played him like through the end of the sequel trilogy. So okay. like he basically the, everything he could be Chewbacca and he was. Cool. Yeah. And then okay, so we have the body of Darth Vader it was was done by a man named David Prouse. Okay. And he was the body double for Darth Vader in all of the three original trilogy movies. Cool. I don't recognize any of the other stuff that he was in, except he was in A Clockwork Orange. Okay. Which is a pretty famous movie. Mm-hmm. And then the voice of Darth Vader was done by James Earl Jones. Wow. Yeah, the voice of Mufasa. Mm-hmm. Um, he's also been in tons of other stuff. I yeah. mean, he's a very famous actor. Coming to America is another one that mm-hmm. a lot of people might recognize him from. Hot Dad, Cool Dad. Yes, Hot Dad, Cool Dad. James Earl Jones. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like really cool that. So I think what I heard is that they tried to have. I think David Prowse just do the voice and it just wasn't it sounding wasn't right. Mm-hmm. And so they hired James Earl Jones, who wasn't that old at the time. Um, let's see. He is, he was born in 31. So he, he's nine, he's 92. Yeah. So in 76, 77, he would have been, Oh, I guess he would have been older already. He would have been 40 or 40. Yeah. So in his forties. So mm-hmm. yeah, I mean like, not unknown, certainly by any means, but yeah. like, I definitely think this, he did not expect this to become no, what it a was. A thing, yeah. Yeah. And is he the voice throughout the entire series? Yes, but I think that he has kind of retired from recording new audio, but because okay. there's so much, they can, just they can do it. a deep fake. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, well, yeah, if they can do a Carrie Fisher hologram, they can pull some you right. know, from him exactly. from old times. Exactly. So yeah, they're, they're able to like cool. have his voice without making him come in. And yeah. Record. And then quick honorable mentions to Phil Brown, who played uncle Owen and Sheila Frazier, who played aunt Baru. Wow. Okay. So, um, that's the cast. So real quick synopsis is as follows. Luke Skywalker joins forces with a Jedi Knight, a cocky pilot, a Wookiee, and two droids to save the galaxy from the Empire's world-destroying battle station, while also attempting to rescue Princess Leia from the mysterious Darth Vader. I love that description. I did. I was almost like, where's Leia in this? And then I realized she was included later. Wow. Yeah. So, Al, first impressions. First impression. I watched a star. <laughs> you did it. I did. This is for you, Zach Roberts. <laughs> um, so I also need to say that my friend Zach, who we have discussed, is probably our number one fan of decommentaries. Uh, works at Disney World, and uh, Star Wars was acquired by Disney. Lucas Films was acquired by Disney, and I told Zach. Cause he works in entertainment. If you're ever a friend with a star Wars person, I will watch a star war. And I never did. <laughs> Cause I was like 2017. And so when Val and I were talking about Patreon exclusive, cause Val's been trying to get me to watch star war too. I was like, this can please my two star war best friends <laughs> <laughs> in, in one false swoop. Yep. Um, I didn't hate it. Okay, good. I didn't hate it. Um, I I feel like I, w- I would give it like a seven. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I don't know that I want to like sit down and watch it again anytime soon. Sure. I don't know that I need to watch the other ones immediately after. Okay. I could see myself potentially watching the other movies. I don't know if I'd watch the spinoff shows or anything like that. Um, maybe that comes with time. I know this has a, a nostalgia factor for a lot of other people. Um, but I thought there was a lot we were laughing about. It was fun. I mean, it, it also is an it's an 80s movie. What 70s. It's a 70s movie. So like some of the technology and some of the acting is just like kind of silly and campy. So it was fun. Um, I do have to admit that I did start dozing off toward the end. <laughs> During what specifically when Luke. <laughs> wait, spoiler alert. When Luke is about to shoot the Death Star. This is the exact <laughs> moment that Al dozed off. <laughs> Like, like head falling, looking up and Val is staring at me. She's like, 
not during the most important part of the movie. <laughs> but I did call that that would happen. I did yeah. call a couple things, which was nice. Yep. And the only reason I feel like I knew, like, I obviously hadn't seen the movie, but I know enough about the characters. And mm-hmm. so there were times where I was like, oh, I think someone, like, loses a limb or doesn't he die or... Or Darth Vader makes it off the ship because he's obviously in the other movies. Mm-hmm. And I knew a lot of the characters because I go to Disney World all the time. And I know that Tatooine exists and Oga's Canteen and the Blue Milk. So, like, I get the references. And so now it's basically just putting all of that into context for my brain, which mm-hmm. was nice. Um yeah, I mean, it wasn't terrible. I don't know why I never, I, why did I never watch it? I just never had interest in it. Sure. It was, it wasn't shown to me as a kid. And so when was going to be the point that, you know, you finally watch it? It's kind of probably like there's people in our generation who've never seen Harry Potter, yeah. you know, it wasn't shown to them and they don't have interest in watching it until something, right. until they need to record a podcast about it. Exactly. So, and you probably get to a point where it's like, I'm almost actively not watching this. At right. This point, and right? I think for a while, for sure, that's because it, it was something I could use it's like a fun fact right where like what's your fun fact hey welcome to this aud- improv audition <laughs> tell us something about you i've never seen star war <laughs> um but i know that there's a couple like i know that there's a lot um like there's a really good ones and then everyone hated this one and then this one was the most engrossing one and i know 2015 was a big year and you know all this <laughs> stuff so um it's kind of nice to be able to follow along a little bit i'm sure yeah. i'll end up watching them at some point sure who knows if there'll be other Patreon only content? Maybe. Let us know in our Discord. Yeah, if you like Star Wars, maybe yeah. we'll just make Al watch all the Star okay. Wars. That'll be our this Patreon. Is, yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Um, Val, what were your first impressions of watching me watch Star Wars? So it was cool to watch this one. I haven't seen this particular movie in a while. Mm-hmm. I think we watched it like right before the pandemic or like around that time. And I'm obsessed with star wars in general so yeah. i've watched all the other series all the mm-hmm. cartoons everything and so it was cool coming back to this especially after having recently watched the obi-wan series because mm-hmm. that really added and it, that's like a prequel yes okay or yes 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 it's set you get 10 his, years yeah his storyline kind of yeah so it's like basically in between the prequels and the in this trilogy okay so um it's 10 years before this the new hope starts and it just, you know, adds a lot of color and emotion and weight to Mm -hmm. a lot of things. And there's other little things from like, even the cartoons that like they use, they sort of justify retroactively Mm -hmm. uh, and things like that. So it's just like fun. And it's really cool to watch that first movie knowing that like, they didn't really know that this was going to become as big as it was. Right. And then how like the stuff that has carried through to now, like whether it's like the prop design or like, you know, the languages or yeah. like the way that like you shoot a control panel and exactly what you want to happen mm-hmm. happens. like Or all- that this would become an actual land in Walt Disney World. Right. <laughs> like, of course, they've never. So like, it's just neat how there's been so much like loyalty to this original idea. Yeah. So that was cool. And then as far as my impression of watching you, other than... <laughs> Other than when you fell asleep, I, I'm very pleased to hear that you liked it as much yeah. as you did. Because you always run the risk, especially with movies that are campy like this and that were made so long ago. If you didn't see it at the right age or right when it came out, depending on you know which came first, like it, there's a huge risk that that person is just not going to connect with it. And yeah. I'm pleased that you did. Yeah. At least enough to not be like, I'm never going to watch any of these right. ever again. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't hate it. Right. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, it's one of those. I don't know that I'll like watch the marathon or this or that. Sure. But like, I don't need a t-shirt. <laughs> but any like standout moments for you? I um liked repeating a lot of the lines that I thought were funny, which is kind of my sense of humor in general. <laughs> um, ask anyone who works with me. I just repeat what they say if I think it's funny. <laughs> um. I don't know. I feel like probably when Obi-Wan dies, because then I know he becomes a hologram, I think. Yes. Yeah. He's a hologram. He's He's like Tupac. (laughs) So because I wasn't expecting it because I know that he is staying throughout the entire series as hologram Tupac. So 
I was not expecting him to die. I was expecting him to lose a limb. Mm -hmm. So there's like little things I know. Like I know that that the lightsaber is colors are good or bad and it sears it off. And I think someone at some point loses a limb. You'll have so, to watch more to find out. Yeah. There was a lot uh, throughout the entire time. I was like, I think this happens. And Val was like, do you want me to tell you? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What's your favorite part of the movie? Hmm. Oh, I liked when they said shaft. <laughs> like you got to <laughs> shoot it down the shaft. I thought that was funny. <laughs> What is my favorite part of this movie? I think now it's the moment when Luke tells Leia that Obi-Wan is on the ship mm -hmm. because of the Obi-Wan series. Mm -hmm. And that's hard to explain beyond that without like spoiling everything. Mm -hmm. But that's just like the whole, that series created, made that moment mean so much more. Um, so like maybe that moment. And then like, I appreciate whenever I watch this, how tough Leia is. Mm -hmm. Like she just takes charge. She grabs the gun. She doesn't care that they don't like her. She's like, we're going to do this my way. Cause I know how to get out of here safely. Yeah. And like, she's the only one who knows that they put a tracker on the ship mm -hmm. and like the guys don't believe her. Like literally every single time she says anything, she's right. Yeah. She, and she just doesn't have any time for their nonsense. Yeah. And these two stupid boys are just like, <laughs> who do you think she'd like more? And <laughs> she's just like off, like actually doing something know, important. <laughs> right. Right. But that's a whole other thing. Um, because they didn't know this was going to be a trilogy. They did not plan for Luke and Leia to be siblings originally, which is why there's weird setup. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. So basically like that was like added in later and that's why it's so weird mm -hmm. in the first movie and even in the second movie. So yeah. Yeah. But anyway, like I just I love Leia. I know that Carrie Fisher was like fighting for that agency because this is very clearly a movie made from the male gaze mm -hmm. and like a 70s male gaze at yeah. that. And sometimes she just had to like submit to that, like how she when she's in the prison cell and she's like in this like sexy pose yeah. and they like open the door, like whatever. That and I know because of Friends, the uh, Jabba the Hutt uh, silver bikini. Yes, thing. that's from two or three. Okay, I think it's three. So like I know like little yeah. things. I know Darth Maul is a person. Right, that's the prequels. Kylo Ren, sequel trilogy. Okay, yes. Yeah. So basically, like, I just love Leia. Yeah. And I think that, you know, she Carrie Fisher advocated a lot for that character to mm -hmm. be better than I think she was originally conceived. No. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah. So Val today is going to do the game. We're switching because this is an, an Al have you seen. So Val is going to pull up some Star Wars New Hope questions that I have to answer and hopefully it won't be while I was dozing off. And I just want to say I wasn't dozing off because of the movie. I was dozing off because I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. We're and, not, we're not I, I didn't man. sleep well. I think I'm still deciding if I want to be good side or bad side. Cause I think the stormtroopers are hot light side or dark side, light side or dark side. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll try some of these okay. and if they turn out to be too hard, we'll pick something else. Okay, cool. Okay. What does C-3PO tell Uncle Owen he did as his first job? Did he program binary load lifters? Did he work with moisture evaporators? Did he work as an interpreter? Or did he work in etiquette and protocol? Moisture. That is not correct. Dang it. It's the first one, isn't it? It's Yes, it's the Dang first it. one. Dang it. Who works in moisture? Why was that So mentioned? they worked in moisture. And oh. he was saying, like, that's not very different from what you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should have gone with my gut. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. This is too hard, I think. Well, I can ask you anyway. Okay. Where does Uncle Owen tell Luke to take R2-D2 for a memory erase? Mos Espa? Mos Eisley? Tashi Station or Anchor Head? Most Eisley. I don't, yeah, I don't think so. It's Anchor Head. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, Most Eisley is where they went to the bar, oh, to the cantina. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. This is really hard. Okay. What well, it's also fun for you listening at home. <laughs> Do yeah. you know these answers? Yeah. <laughs> what is something Obi Wan does not tell Luke? Okay. Okay. His father was a navigator. His father was a pilot. 
His father was a Jedi. His father was a good friend. I'm between A and D. I don't know if either of those are right. I'm going to say A. That's correct. Yay! That is what Uncle Owen told him. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why I didn't say because I was like, if he, I know he said he was a pilot, so he couldn't be a pilot and a navigator. I mean, he could, but I just yeah. didn't think that was logical. No, that was like the lie that Uncle Owen told him was that he was just a navigator for something. Mm. Okay, you might remember this one. Okay. Where did the Millennium Falcon take off from Mose Eisley? Docking Bay 94, Platform 492, Port 73, tarmac 21 the port c it was docking bay 90 dang i almost said that and i shouldn't or i should have because docking bays are in rise of the resistance mm -hmm. that's right i've ridden that ride the amount of times everyone that i just said oh like smugglers run every time they were in the millennium falcon and val was like i don't know i haven't ridden it <laughs> I was like, sure. I'm sure it's yeah. like, that. okay. What? Oh, I don't know if you're going to know this one. Okay. Uh, we'll try. Okay. What is the name of the game that R2D2 and Chewbacca are playing on the Millennium Falcon? Ooh. Sabak, Catamaran, Devoran, Dejaric. I have no idea, but it reminded me of Spy Kids 2 when Steve Buscemi <laughs> is moving around all of his tiny little guys on the island. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with A. Well, that is a game in Star Wars, but it's a different, it's a card oh. game. Uh, Dejaric was the correct answer. Okay. okay. What planet does Leia tell Tarkin the <gasps> rebel base is on? Oh, I know this one. You want to just say it? No. Okay. <laughs> Kessel, Dantooine. Yavin, Dirk Teal. Dan Tween. That's right. Yay. Good job. I did know one. <laughs> See, she did watch it. I did watch the movie. <laughs> um, okay, this might be a hard one, but we'll try. What cell is Princess Leia held in in the Death Star? 3827-2187-1138 or AA23? It's either C or D. Can you read them both again? Just C and D? Mm -hmm. 1138 AA23. I'm going to go C. It was B. Dang it! 2187. <laughs> okay. What are the stormtroopers near the tractor beam terminal just like chit chatting about? Obi Wan being aboard the Death Star, Luke, Han, and Leia splitting up, all the sections of the uh, ship being on alert. Or the new VT-16? A. It's D. Dang it. Because they're just sort of like shooting the shit. Shooting the shit. Those shit shooters. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is really hard. How many rebel ships were used in the Death Star assault? 15, 20, 30, 27. I only remember seeing... Like seven different pilots. So <laughs> I was going to say like seven. So I'm going to say B. It was C. 30. Yeah. You know I what, guys? I've only seen this one time. So I, I would have gotten it wrong, too. I was going to guess 27 because that was the only not like yeah. even number or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this one you should know. Okay. What year did Star Wars A New Hope come out? What did we say? <laughs> oh, fuck. It was... <laughs> Do you want me to give you the options? Yeah. 1979 or 1977? Fuck. Do you really not remember? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> we just said it. 77. Yes. Oh, thank God. <laughs> that uh, was the year my uh, my mom graduated high school. Wow. Wow. Um, what is Obi-Wan Kenobi going by? Ben. That's right. Okay. See? Oh, I like this one. Okay. Uh, complete this line. Okay. Aren't you a little blank to be a stormtrooper? Short. Yep. That was fun. I liked that line. <laughs> favorite, favorite quotes or moments. <laughs> <laughs> Han Solo claims the Millennium Falcon made the Kessel run in less than 0.5. No, but that was a different part of the movie. Uh -oh. So that's actually a good memory. Thank you. Do you want me to give you the two options? Yeah. 12 parsecs or 17 helix? No idea. 12 parsecs okay. which also doesn't make any sense because they then made parsecs be, be a distance 
uh, measure instead of a time measure. Yeah. <laughs> um, ooh, this is a good one. I don't even know for sure. What is Darth Vader's first line of dialogue? <gasps> wow. Yeah. Uh, where are those transmissions you intercepted? Or this will be a day long remembered. I feel like B is crazy if it is. But I'm going to say A. I think you're right. Okay. We okay. just, I just said this when I was doing the cast. Okay. Oh, no. Tarkin mm -hmm. is a grand what? Oh, Marshall. No. Okay. Teton. Moth. Moth. M O F F. Moth. <laughs> grand Teton. Um, <laughs> what does Han Solo do when his attempt to impersonate a stormtrooper over the comms doesn't work? Oh, he just shoots the thing. That's right. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is another one we just talked about during the cast, <gasps> oh, so let's no. see if you can remember. I won't. While James Earl Jones provides the voice of Darth Vader, who was the actor in the suit? Dalton. No. What's his name? David Prowse. Okay, I was close with the D. Sure. <laughs> um, okay, who is this? Biggs Darklighter or Wedge Antilles? Wedge. That's right. Yeah, I knew that once. You, I do, didn't know his name, but you said that he comes back. Yes, he does. And I know that Oscar Isaac is a pilot. He is a pilot. He wears orange. That's right. Um. Okay, this is a good one to end on. Okay. Because we looked it up in the moment. Oh, no. What is the name of the species that kidnap R2-D2 and C-3PO <gasps> at the beginning of the movie? Jawas. That's right. Yay. Yay. We couldn't remember. We kept calling them Jabberwockies. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, Yay. Mal, Yay. That was a great game. You did wonderfully. Thanks. I probably got a 70%, which is at also least. what I gave Star Wars. Yes. So. Crushed. Well, this was so fun. One. To get to hang out with you mm -hmm. in human person. Yes. Um, to to finally watch a Star Wars. Yes. I don't know great. when I'll watch another one, but it happened. Who knows? If this is a big success, yeah. we're gonna make if you, you watch people, the other ones. If you people like it. I you guess. people. You you fucking people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this was a joy. Yes. Uh, welcome to our first have you seen. I feel like Val, I wanna pick of have you seen for you that you that i've seen that you haven't oh there's plenty yeah so our next we'll have you one. seen will be one have you seen patreon only content we will come back at you with a val have you seen mm -hmm. and i love you i love you <laughs> <laughs> bye val bye al This podcast was produced by me. And me. And it was edited by me. The music was composed by Michael McNally. You can find us online at thetridentnetwork.com slash dcommentaries hyphen pod. And you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at dcommentaries. Dcommentaries is a part of the Trident Network. To learn more about our videos, live shows, and other podcasts, please visit thetridentnetwork.com. Disney Channel Original Movies. Damn it, Ellie.